Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel and in today's video we are going to be installing a new sewer treatment plant. One thing that comes with owning a rural property like ours is that there's no main sewerage. Everything is private drainage in this area. So after a lot of research into the differences between septic tanks and sewage treatment plants, we've decided to install a brand new system. The septic tank we currently have is non-compliant due to leaks in some of the pipes and rather than repairing an old system that's been there for at least 20 years, we've decided to replace it entirely. Plus, it's right in the middle of the lawn, so this gives us a chance to relocate it to a better spot at the far right-hand corner of the property. In this video, we're going to take you through every step of the installation process. We'll also break down all the critical parts of the installation, including measurements, specifications, and compliance tips to help you get it all right. So let's get into it and show you what the guys are up to. The first step was excavating the hole for our sewage treatment plant. We went for a Marsh Industries Enco 8, which measures just over 1.9 meters tall, 2.6 meters long, and 1.6 meter wide. To accommodate the tank and ensure stability, we needed to excavate an area that was at least 450 millimeters wider on all sides. Since the land at the back of the plot near the fence sits higher than where the waste pipe exits the house, we had to dig the hole for the tank even deeper to create sufficient gradient and proper flow. This ensures the waste drains efficiently from the house to the treatment plant. Amidst all the chaos of digging and trenching, Ryan's dog Bruce was having the time of his life. With all the roots and freshly dug earth, it was basically paradise for him. I wanted to give a shout out to Southern Drainage and Water Limited. It's my cousin's company and while this isn't a sponsored video, I wanted to share our experience since they handled the installation for us. They were professional and efficient which is exactly what you need when tackling something as involved as a sewage treatment plant installation and they cover a wide range of drainage and water solutions. One of the best decisions that we made during this project was opting for a gravel lorry to clear away the waste. A big advantage is cost efficiency. A gravel lorry can carry much more waste than a standard skip, making it far more affordable per load. So guys, that's day one complete. They have done an amazing job. Can you believe that Jay doesn't have a driver's license, didn't know how to operate a dumper truck, and by the end of today, she was working it like a complete professional. She did absolutely amazing, so well done, Jade. Behind me is a huge 
whole something that Josh and I thought that we were going to be able to do ourselves there was absolutely no way that we would have been able to do that so I'm so thankful that Ryan was here and he has done it all a couple of moments that James and I were a bit worried for Ryan's safety but he's the professional he knows what he's doing tomorrow the tank should arrive and it will hopefully be situated in said hole behind me and then we have started filling the septic tank that was there before Next, we excavated the trenches for the pipes that would carry the waste from the bathroom, utility room and kitchen to the sewage treatment plant. We were also thinking ahead, planning out where future bathrooms could be added and ensuring that the trench system would be able to accommodate them. Installing extra junction points now saves us hassle and money later. Once the hole was ready, we used the digger to carefully move the tank from the front of the property and place it into the hole. Despite the size, these units are surprisingly lightweight but need to be handled carefully to avoid damage. Always lift the tank, never drag it, and double check that it's placed level before moving on to the next step. Hip to narrow. Oh really? Say that the team from Southern Drainage and Water Limited have done an absolutely amazing job. Even though I did get a slight discount for family, I am still a paying customer and their standard rates were significantly cheaper than the other local companies I contacted by as much as a few thousand. I honestly couldn't be happier with the service. They were very knowledgeable, efficient and patient with all of my questions, making the entire process feel so much more manageable. With the tank in position and the hole ready, we moved on to pouring the concrete. Our property is on hard clay soil and technically it sits on a hill compared to surrounding villages, so we could go with a smaller base of 150mm of concrete. However, if you're dealing with high water tables or waterlogged soil, it's recommended to use a base of at least 250mm for better stability and support. We poured 2 cubic meters of slightly wetter concrete making sure that it seeped into all the gaps and crevices. The concrete covered the flange lips of the tank for added stability. A key point here is to partially fill the tank with water as you pour the concrete to weigh it down and to prevent it from shifting or compressing. We kept checking the tank to ensure it remained level throughout the process. To prepare the trenches for the inlet pipes we laid a bed of pea gravel. This provides a stable but flexible base helping to drain water, support the pipe's weight and prevent damage. Pea gravel is also great for protecting against ground movement in soil settlement as its smooth run texture ensures that pipes aren't punctured or damaged. Ideally you want to lay at least 100 millimeters of pea gravel on the base and then the same on top of the pipe. We used 110 millimeter UPVC underground drainage pipes, maintaining a minimum fall of 1 to 40 or 25 millimeters per meter for a gravity fed system. For those of you that might be confused by that like I was, what that essentially means is every one meter of space, your starting point and level would then be 25 millimeters lower than the original point. We also installed junctions to accommodate pipes from various parts of the house. The junctions were cemented in place for added stability and protection against ground movement and root intrusion. Importantly, regulations now prohibit 90 degree bends and cannot be more than a maximum of 45 degrees. This is in place to ensure a smooth flow and compliance.
Before backfilling, we poured water down the pipes to test their drainage and flow. Testing before backfilling is essential to catch any potential issues early and avoid having to dig everything up again. A sewage treatment plant's wastewater output is technically safe enough to drink and is safe enough to discharge into a running watercourse, such as a river or a stream. Since we don't have any nearby watercourses, we opted for a drainage field to disperse the treated wastewater safely into the ground. Given our heavy clay soil, we went above and beyond by digging a 60 metre drainage field spread across three separate sections, double the amount that would normally be needed for a property of our size. Each trench was 450 millimetres wide and 800 millimetres deep. For the drainage field, we laid a 250 millimetre bed of gravel and aggregate, with the stone sizes being individually around 3 to 4 centimetres in circumference at the bottom of the trench. If you're in the south of the UK and considering drainage work, sewage treatment plant installations or any other water solutions, definitely reach out to Southern Drainage and Water Limited. They do travel for work, so it's worth checking if they can help you out. Their details are linked below in the description box, and if you get in touch, please mention that you found them through this channel. Be a yes, gonna say, being told by the boss. On top of that, we then used 110mm UPVC perforated pipes to allow the water to disperse effectively. Next, we covered the pipes with a membrane fabric to prevent any soil and debris from clogging up the perforations. Then, we added 150mm of gravel on top of that before backfilling the trench. This ensures that there's proper drainage here, which is key to avoid any future issues. After laying the pipes and ensuring that everything was in place, we backfilled the drainage field trenches. We tried to remove as much clay soil as possible using only the top soil instead to backfill for better drainage. With the tank installed we moved on to finishing touches. Since the tank was placed quite deep onto the ground we built up the access area with brickwork for added stability. Because of our clay soil and drainage field setup we opted for a pumped outlet system to ensure proper flow. A gravity fed outlet was just not an option for us. When it comes to the compressors there are two options to choose from. One where it's housed externally from the tank and the other where it's housed within the tank itself. While the compressors that are housed externally from the tank are believed to last a little longer, we decided to go for the one that's housed within the tank itself. The reason for this is because it's believed that the noise pollution is lower. This is a big plus for us, especially considering our peaceful location. At this point, the electrics aren't fully connected yet, but once that's done, we'll be able to properly test everything. For now though, the hardest and dirtiest part of the job is officially done.